You kind of just want the best for your kids. You don't send them off to work thinking that they're not going to come home or they're going to get seriously hurt. Hey, my name is Jason Daniels. I'm uh, 20. I'm from, I'm from Dalby, Queensland. It was all right growing up in Dalby. I like getting out, riding the bikes with my brothers, going fishing at the coast. Jason has a child, very easy going, always in with the funny jokes. But he always loved machinery. He always loved being outside. So when I left school, halfway through grade 10, we ended up going to the truck with my dad for the first sort of job. Then got the opportunity to go work on the farm. So my dream was, yeah, go work on the far, uh, small farm, build up enough money, get me an MC truck licence and probably buy a truck. I was excited for him because it was his first actual job, something he wanted to do, and he loves farming and, and all that. First proper job without Dad. I didn't get any safety inductions, just general common sense around machinery. So the day I had my accident was the 27th of October 2017. The morning was good, I was carting a bit of grain from the field into the silos because we had a road train coming in to load. So we were all rushing around, moving equipment to get it ready to load the truck and we started moving the all go and I turned around to the boss and said we're getting too close to the overhead power line. I think we should lower it and he goes no we don't have time and kept going and that's when we collided with the overhead power line. Receiving a phone call and hearing that Jason had been in the accident, your first thought is, is just tell me my son's alive, like. All I can remember is in pain and agony, uh, my brother-in-law Lachlan was there. He was running around trying to get help. He actually put the phone down to Jason and Jason was actually talking, which as you can imagine, as for a mum, it was kind of heartbreaking hearing the pain that he was in, but relieved at the same time that he was still with us. So I remember the ambulance arriving on site, and then after that, uh, nothing really. Walking in to the hospital, first thing I seen was his feet, and they weren't a pretty sight. Beside him, I seen a, a few burns on his shoulder and on his stomach, and the smell is the biggest thing. It was, yeah, it took me ages to get over that, the, the smell of it. They ended up putting him in a juice coma. The doctor showed me more photos because I didn't realise how bad he was burnt on the back. That's when reality really sunk in. So the entry point is on my left leg. I lost the main muscle out of it and the exit point is out of my hands and feet. What amazes me is when I first heard about the accident, I thought the bottom of his boots would have been destroyed. But amazing and alone enough, you've got one hole here, one here, there, and there, and then you've got here and here. So compared to what happened to his feet, knowing that little points can cause so much damage when it exits. I got airlifted from Tara to Royal Brisbane. He was in ICU for two weeks and then he was moved to Burns Unit. And in the two months, he had nine operations, which took a very big toll on Jay. This is where Jason's lost four toes, two on this foot, two on this foot. The major muscle in his leg. Then you've got more burns and skin grafts here. You've got skin grafts here and here. Take your back, skin grafts, all up around his arms, and the around here, just lightly burnt. I went through a lot of physio, learning how to walk again and trying to build up my muscle again in my left leg. Watching every day him having to have physio done twice a day, learning to have to stand on his feet when they were so raw, watching him have to relearn to walk and then get balance and learn to do stairs again. And that was just to get him home. Like, it's, it's hard, really hard. If you see that something's not safe, speak up. Don't think that it's not right, because you're better off being open and speak up than something happening and your family going through what we've been through.
Electrical infrastructure such as poles, lines and stays pose a massive risk for those working in the agriculture industry. If you don't have the option to move your lines or put them underground, then you need to assess the risk, put a safe system of work in place and ensure that everyone knows what that is to prevent an injury. Exclusion zones are the minimum distance we must stay away from power lines. And these change depending on the voltage of the lines and the type of work being done. You don't have to make direct contact with a power line to receive an electric shock. Electricity can jump, so just straying into those exclusion zones is a really high risk issue. You can cause damage to plant and equipment, really serious injury to people. If you employ young workers, please understand that they have a unique risk profile and if they raise a safety issue with you, please take them seriously. We need to ensure that we give them plenty of encouragement to do the jobs properly, which means to do the jobs safely. When are we going riding again? Oh, hopefully soon, I reckon. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Been gone for a long time. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Mentally, he would have his fine, but as the family knows, there's a lot that he does struggle with and he's still the happy-go-lucky boy, but not as, not out there like he used to be as much. I think it's brought my family closer together, all of us. And yeah, it's brought me and a few of my mates closer. What's been the hardest thing? The physio yeah. side of things, yeah. What do you miss the most? My toes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I would like to get back into work. It is quite confronting that you like get to call your boss up on something when they're a lot older than what I was at the time. And you have to pull them up on a hazard like that and they just don't want to listen, really. And that's why I decided to do to speak up, just to give an awareness out there to people working on farms and other things like that around overhead power lines or electricity. It, it could have been all avoided is the hardest thing. And I want people to realise that in a heartbeat, your life can change, so take the time Take that two minutes extra to go, OK, can we be doing this in a different way that can be more safer, that no one's going to get hurt? And if we can get that message across so no other one has to go through what we've been through, it's worth every minute.